Hello all, in this video we will see about certain points to remember before access opening of the maxillary first premolar. It will be easy when we visualize practically but before going to the practical aspect you need to know some theoretical points for where to look for the cusps, where to look for the access opening before starting practically. So let me let us start with the theoretical aspects. The access opening of the maxillary first molar begins with locating the canals. So you should have a knowledge of the canals. One is located facially that is buccally and another palatally. The axis cavity is ovoid shaped. The pulp chamber is narrow in the mesiodistal direction and it is wider in the fasciopalatal direction. It is in contrast to the GV Black's cavity preparation which you will prepare along the cusps of the along the grooves mesiodistally. But the axis cavity preparation is in the direction longitudinal and opposite to the GV Black's cavity preparation direction. So the average length of the premolar is 22.5 millimeters and uh, when you look locally locate the canals in the IOPA the canals are usually superimposed in IOPA but two pulp horns are present which you have to keep in mind. The two canal orifices are one located buccally and one in the palatal aspect. The chamber floor is convex as you could make out from this diagram here. The canal orifices are located at the coronal third of the root which you should also remember. So that is the depth which you should locate the um, canal orifice. And uh, the roots can be fused or uh, usually two in number. 50% can be separate or fused. It is, actually, it is actually equal probability of the root being either separate or fused. Even if the roots are fused, mostly two root canals will be present. So you should be uh, sure about that to look for two root canals. Sometimes there can, there can be a third canal, but two are more common. And if single roots are present, mostly they can be straight or distally curved. And the other point to remember is the buccal surface is in close proximation with the buccal cortical plate therefore there is higher chance of fenestration or dehiscence while looking for the canal if you move like this there could be a chance that you could perforate the buccal cortical plate therefore keep it in mind and buccal canal is under the buccal cusp palatal canal is under the palatal cusp and it is bigger in dimension so it is straight under the cusp so what are the steps in access opening you should anything whatever you do you should do it in a systematic uh, method to attain the results to the maximum success so the what are the steps in access opening use radiograph to determine the dimensions of the access cavity beforehand and use round bar to penetrate the between the buccal and the lingual cusps start in the center so you start in the center and the burr is aligned to the long axis of the tooth. As you move inside and once you reach the pulp chamber, you feel that burr drop. When you penetrate the pulp chamber, you feel the burr drop. And sufficient depth is reached to remove the pulp chamber roof completely. So while removing the pulp chamber roof, you should remember the following points. To remove roof, burrs are placed along the walls of the chamber and the usually tapered cylinder burr is preferred here. And uh, imagine in a three dimensional aspect, you are completely removing the walls of the chamber. Therefore, you are completely de-roofing the pulp chamber. Then walls are smoothened with occlusal divergence. So this is the takeaway point to remember it is the ovoid axis cavity and it is opposite to the GV Black's cavity shape not beyond half of the cuspal inclines. So this is the cusp not beyond half of the cuspal inclines. Don't make a very huge axis opening in search of canals. The canals are straight away below the cusps. cusps. So you should remember the axis cavity should not beyond extend beyond the half of the cuspal in inclines. And rarely three root canals can be present, so make sure to look out for that also. And irrigate and remove the debris to facilitate the easy location of the axis, uh, pulp canal chambers, orifices. So these are the takeaway points to remember. And before ending this video, we need to look into the third question of the giveaway contest of this month. The third question is, does ferrioxamine is antidote for what? 
So, see you soon in the next video with the next question.